Even though we've officially closed our Great Affordable 1911 series, I'm still adding to the playlist and I uh, picked up another one today. This uh, we're going to take a look at here in just a minute. We'll do the official unboxing of the Alpha Foxtrot 1911. Stay with me. <laughs> Welcome to Rider's Range, where we take a hopefully quick look at the Alpha Foxtrot 1911 in a uh, state-of-the-art, custom-made, oh, yeah, right, um, Plano Protector Series case. Nothing fancy at all about it, uh, but again, don't spend the money on a, on a case, spend it on the quality of the firearm. And inside we have just a plain old 1911, which we're going to get to in just a minute when we look at what else is in here. And it's just the usual paraphernalia, uh, a lock, registration card, and you'll see the Wilson Combat 45. We'll talk more about that here in just a minute. And also an instruction manual that is a uh, fairly high quality card stock or paper. It's actually relatively thick. It looks like it's got some good uh, directions in there. Well, we're going to take a look at that um, after off camera. There's also looking at the instruction manual on camera. So we're going to talk about the Alpha Foxtrot 1911. And this is a full-size steel frame um, government type 1911 in, of course, John Browning's own caliber, the 45 ACP. And left side, you could almost say that this is a gun crafter no-name. Um, not quite. On the right side of the side, you know I don't like big billboards, and this does not have it other than the Alpha Foxtrot symbol in the back. It says Alpha Foxtrot on the side of the frame. Duluth, Georgia, USA. This uh, company, I believe, is a subsidiary of a Korean company, possibly Daewoo. I'd have to go back and check the notes on that one. Um, and I think, from what I've seen, this gun is actually made in Georgia, but don't quote me on that. And for the safety crew, I do want to show that this gun, there's no magazine in it right now and there is nothing in the chamber. So we'll take a look at the features on this gun. It is a 5 inch steel frame, steel slide. I understand that these are all uh, forged uh, parts to, um, and that's my understanding from their what a little bit I've seen on their website. Um, the flat on the top of the slide is not serrated as some of them have been but again that's a glare issue. I don't have a problem with glare. Uh, forward cocking serrations, rear cocking serrations are widely spaced. They're not super aggressive but I don't feel that there's going to be any slippage with these. They feel like they're probably going to work out just fine. Uh, it has a, a white dot front sight and a plain black serrated rear sight. I like the uh, the combination, although I may end up blacking out the, uh, the front uh, white dot. And it is dovetailed on the front, dovetailed with a uh, locking screw on the back, and it does say uh, Novax on it. Now, is that really a Novax sight? I'm not 100% sure it is, but I will look into it more before we do the official uh, shooting review. I have not shot this. I just picked it up today. 45 ACP on the barrel doesn't say match grade or anything. And it is a bushing barrel with a typical GI guide rod, not a not a full length. The barrel on this is just very slightly reverse crown though. I uh, don't find that on uh, on a lot of guns, and especially in this price bracket. Um, uh, and these list for somewhere around 1300 but uh, generally you can pick them up for around 1000 give or take. Uh, let's see here. The ambidextrous safety is more of a Swenson style. It's not a, a King's Gun Company uh, style. Swenson is the most popular. Uh, most of my ambi guns have the Swenson style safety on it. Uh, paddle on the right is just a little bit smaller than the paddle on the left, which is okay. And it is a mimmed part as far as I can tell. The hammer also appears to be mimmed, as does the uh, uh, slide stop lever. Uh, some generic no-name G10 grips on it, checkered on the, the front. This is machine checkering, checkered on the mainspring housing. Provides a good grip. I'm probably going to sw swap these uh, uh, grips out for something with a little more uh, texture to them. I, I really like lock grips. If you've seen some of my other videos where, uh, where I use lock, uh, I'll probably swap it out because these grips don't quite match the uh, the texture of the um, of the grip on the, the front of the mainspring housing. Uh, excuse me, the front of the grip. The magazine release is easy to get to and functional. Mm, a little scallop on the grip helps obviously on that. No rail on it. 
a uh, typical rounded trigger guard nothing real f extra fancy about it but a couple things I do want to point out first of all I popped the magazine out you'll see this is a Wilson combat magazine which I really like I uh, if I have any trouble with magazines at all I switch to a Wilson and life is good uh, the downside to that is this only comes with one magazine. I would say they're trying to copy Kimber, except Kimber ships theirs with one Kimpro magazine, and I usually end up putting those away and digging out the Wilson. Uh, and there is just hardly any taper at all to the uh, to the magwell. It's again typical GI type. There's not much to it. But the the trigger is what I really want to talk about on this, and. Again, we've already verified the gun is empty. There's very little up and down play on the trigger. There is just a little bit of movement. By the way, uh, the grip safety is critical on this along with everything else because it is a Series 80 style gun. Uh, I only mentioned that because usually the triggers aren't as good on an 80, um, but I haven't noticed that on, on quality Series 80 guns trigger on this though is you got just a little bit of take up there that's not a real objectionable um, more so than a uh, than a, a Wilson or a Nighthawk uh, less than some others and there's a little just a little bit of creep not much no over travel it does have an over travel stop on it the reset is typical 1911 fairly short and then it comes out to the the full extension and pull in again however 1911 triggers are supposedly the absolute best and after testing more than four dozen 1911s over the last couple of years I will say they're the best but this one just doesn't feel it all right what I use my wheeler gauge or when I say that uh, some gun has a trigger that is uh, really light they say my gauge isn't accurate uh, there's the calibration certificate for this wheeler gauge I think it's accurate I only bring that out because after doing this trigger I'm sure somebody's gonna say that well gee 1911 triggers never weigh that much so it can't be accurate well let's find out so we're gonna turn the uh, wheeler on zero it we'll give you a pull here on camera and then we'll speed it up for the rest of them and the first pull uh, I gotta have the grip safety in sorry about that first pull is eight pounds 4.4 ounces all right we'll speed up the next five or next three here and get a five pull average seven pounds 0 0.1 for an average of seven pounds 3.8 ounces over five pulls I can't say that I'm at all impressed with that. I do hope that after shooting this uh, for the uh, actual range review, I'll put a couple of rounds through it and we'll see how it works after that. We'll do some uh, dry practice with it also. But uh, there are a lot of things I like about the firearm, but that uh, trigger so far does not turn me on. Although it really doesn't feel bad. You know, just working the trigger, it doesn't feel bad because it's, it's a clean pole. It's just rather heavy. Uh, a couple things I didn't mention I want to cover real quick before we close this out and that is fit and finish on this again this gun is uh, definitely falls into our affordable 1911 series the slide to extractor fit is good it's uh, in fact I'd, I'd even uh, rate that as very good there's just I'll get some contrast here again there is just a little protrusion of the extractor from the back of the slide not much the slide to ejector fit, however, I'm only going to call, um, yeah, okay. I'm not going to call it great by any means. It doesn't quite uh, fit as good as some of the others I've had, even even less expensive guns. The slide to frame fit, however, is really good. There's hardly any movement, although slide to frame is overrated. Uh, the main thing in accuracy is going to be slide to barrel, not slide to frame. And this barrel does not have any noticeable movement from the slide. So uh, again, fitted, finished, um, yeah, finish, I'm not even sure what the finish is on this. I will research it before I do the range review. But it, um, I think I like it for the price, but um, I'm not sure how it's all going to shake out. i got to work that trigger in some. So we're going to put some rounds through it over the next couple of weeks, uh, hopefully 200 or more, and I'll report back with a range review on uh, this. and We'll see how the Alpha Foxtrot 45 caliber 1911 shakes out in the real world. Thanks for stopping in.